Hello, my name is Jody Mintz. I'm an interventional cardiologist and vascular medicine specialist at Columbia University Medical Center. Today, uh, I'm here to present a case of an intermediate high-risk pulmonary embolism, which was managed with one of the newest devices in our armamentarium, the Flash 16 French uh, aspiration catheter, which is made by Penumbra. No relevant disclosure. So we'll start with the case. Uh, the, this is a case which happened fairly recently, a 61-year-old female with diet-controlled hyperlipidemia who had presented three weeks previous uh, to her current presentation with a, a traumatic fall. She slipped uh, on the rain, in the rain and had a distal fibular and medial malleolar fracture. Uh, operative management of this was offered to her. However, she preferred non-operative management and it was managed with casting in the ER. She was discharged from the ER. Um, of note, no uh, uh, VT prophylaxis was prescribed at the time. So she presented uh, to a, an affiliate uh, institution of ours with one week of fatigue and one day of pleuritic chest pain and associated shortness of breath. In the emergency department, uh, she was found to be afebrile. Uh, she had a resting tachycardia with a heart rate of 120 beats per minute, uh, a marginal blood pressure of 93 over 80. Uh, she was quite tachypneic, respirating at 28 uh, breaths per minute and was saturating at 84% uh, on room air. Uh, electrocardiogram showed sinus tachycardia. She was immediately placed on high flow nasal cannula at 40 liters per minute. Uh, blood work returned with a, a elevated troponin, elevated BNP, uh, reasonably normal uh, CBC with a, a normal creatinine, um, normal renal function. So these are some representative images of her CT uh, pulmonary embolism study. As you can see here, she had extensive thrombus burden, in, including all five of the lobes, um, the distal main uh, pulmonary arteries bilaterally and she has an elevated right ventricle to left ventricle ratio of a 1.3, which is consistent with right ventricular strain. Venous duplex done also in the emergency department showed a left popliteal DVT. They were unable to go uh, more distally into the calf as this was casted um, at the time. So these are some representatives uh, runs from the initial transthoracic echocardiogram, which was performed also in the emergency department there. And uh, as you can see, the right ventricle is quite dilated, quite hypokinetic with a kind of typical McConnell sign uh, sparing of the apex, but a quite large right ventricle. Um, so what now? So she's at one of our affiliate hospitals. Uh, the PERT team was activated. Um, we were called and uh, the case was discussed and we felt it best to uh, bring her uh, to our institution for evaluation for advanced therapies. So on arrival, she was uh, maintaining her oxygen saturation in the mid 90s, uh, now on 15 liters nasal cannula. She was quite tachypneic with this with word dyspnea, uncomfortable. She exhibited a resting tachycardia again in the 120s. She had a marginal blood pressure similar to her presentation with a very narrow pulse pressure uh, suggesting um, uh, impending uh, shock. She was unable to lay fully supine due to the orthopnea. Given her uh, clinical, clinically elevated risk, uh, our decision was made to pursue thrombus extraction. Um, we, we didn't feel at the time that uh, we could wait for catheter-directed thrombolytics to uh, kick in and we, and we would want to uh, deal with this as quickly as possible. Um, so at this point, we reached for the newest member of the Penumbra thrombectomy catheters, the Flash 16 French uh, device. Um, it is redesigned now with uh, what is considered max uh, inner diameter technology. So it's able to uh, maintain a smaller uh, profile with a larger uh, inner diameter consistent compatible with uh, with other large bore catheters. There's dual detection uh, algorithms which allow for quicker clot detection and uh, quicker patent flow detection uh, as compared to the smaller 12 French uh, device. 
So this is how the catheter uh, comes packaged. It uh, is packaged with a six French select catheter, which comes with one of two configurations, uh, either the uh, Burr configuration, which you can see as a single bend, or the H1, which comes with a secondary bend as well. The device itself uh, similarly comes with two different configurations. Uh, the X torque, which uh, you can see here on the left, uh, comes in a, a 100 centimeter length. It has a single bend on it. Uh, and the H torque, which uh, comes in an 80, 100, and 115 centimeter length, uh, which has the secondary bend on it. So, as is uh, our uh, technique in our institution, we obtain ultrasound guided 7 French access in the common femoral vein. Uh, a 7 French balloon tip PA catheter is advanced uh, into the pulmonary artery. A right heart catheterization is performed with uh, the exception of a wedge pressure. And as you can see here, she had uh, somewhat elevated pulmonary pressure um, with a mean PA pressure of 34 millimeters of mercury and a cardiac index of 2.1. So the balloon tip catheter was exchanged uh, then for a uh, pigtail catheter, uh, which uh, was able to facilitate selective bilateral pulmonary angiography. And as you can see here, this is confirming what was seen on the CAT scan. There's substantial clot burden in bilateral distal main pulmonary arteries extending into all five lobes. So after the decision is made now to pursue uh, thrombectomy, a uh, lobar branch is selected with an 035 inch Benson wire, uh, which is then exchanged for an 035 Amplat super stiff one centimeter tip. This was in this case done through the uh, balloon tip catheter. Uh, the one centimeter tip uh, provides a very important feature of this, which uh, allows for the longest area of support along the entire length uh, of the super stiff wire with the exception of the, the last uh, one centimeter. Uh, with the wire safely uh, in place, uh, the venotomy site is dilated and a gore dry seal 16 French by 33 centimeter sheet is placed. Uh, early in my experience with this catheter, I was uh, using the 65 centimeter sheath with the sheath placed distally into the pulmonary artery. Uh, I found um, early on that, particularly with the use of the h torque catheter, that the secondary bend would kick back on the sheath if it were placed in the pulmonary artery um, and, and push the sheath back into the, the right ventricle. Uh, I therefore started using the 33 centimeter sheath placed uh, into the IBC and um, uh, haven't had an, any issues with that. Uh, and have been, it's been going quite well. Um, under fluoroscopy, the uh, flash 16X torque uh, in this case was advanced into the pulmonary artery and two dedicated runs were performed on each side. And this is a, a, a example of the torqueability maneuverability of the device. So with the wire pulled back, uh, the device is able to be advanced, withdrawn, uh, flipped up into the truncus, down into the interlobar artery, uh, pretty freely and atraumatic. Uh, this ha it really comes from Penumbra's uh, early experience as a neurovascular company uh, and the atraumatic portion of the the catheter allows for you to uh, really torque it quite well. The, the back end of the, the catheter is quite stiff, which allows for it to, to maintain its position with the front part of the catheter and more distal part of the catheter to be fairly flexible and atraumatic. The curve on the catheter uh, allows uh, for deflection, um, uh, reducing the chance of injury to the artery. So here is a, an example of what you might uh, hear when turning it on. Uh, the green light uh, is in sampling mode. When the green light is on and it's sampling, it's not sensing any resistance. Um, and therefore, it's only, it's, you're not engaged in clot, and so it's just doing small little sample pulls. When the catheter will uh, note higher resistance, and clots detected, it will go solid yellow. And this is when it's starting to pull. 
the addition uh, uh, of the flash mode uh, to the, the flash uh, thrombectomy catheter uh, will give you this sound, which is really the catheter getting kicked into hyperdrive and really trying to extract that clot. Uh, if the catheter tip is occluded, um, uh, either by uh, uh, occlusion against the wall or uh, uh, there's clot that's um, socked in on the end or lollipopping, the, there will be a flashing yellow light here, and that will denote that, in which case the catheter would need to be removed. So in our case, uh, this was uh, a representative picture of the thrombus that was extracted um, from her arteries. At this point, given the thrombus burden that was retrieved, a repeat right heart catheterization was performed, uh, showing a substantial reduction in her pulmonary artery pressures from 34 to 17. Uh, her, her cardiac index uh, improved from 2.1 to 2.56. The uh, pigtail catheter was then uh, Rep uh, repositioned in the uh, bilateral pulmonary arteries and angiography was performed and as you can see here substantial clot reduction uh, was seen and uh, importantly also good venous return as well su suggesting that the distal vascular beds were uh, uh, fairly clear as well. So at this point um, we uh, decided to stop. Uh, we had achieved our goal of reducing the pulmonary artery pressures and all equipment was removed. Now this is uh, my method of, of closure. Uh, it's a simple uh, purse string suture. After um, the uh, device is removed, the sheath is in place. There are three throws uh, of a 2-0 silk suture, which is uh, north of the venotomy site, across transverse the venotomy site, and then south. Now, uh, the two ends of the suture are then placed through a three-way stopcock, which is advanced and pressed tightly against the skin, and the, uh, the three-way the stopcock is then locked in place. So her immediate post-operative post-procedural course, uh, she had an estimated blood loss of uh, about 150 cc's. Uh, this was from uh, four uh, total pulls. Um, she was weaned from the 15 liters to room air on the table before moving her into her gurney. Uh, the resting tachycardia that she exhibited when she came in improved as well from 120s to 90s. Uh, she was started on unfractioned IV heparin an hour after hemostasis was achieved. The purse string suture was removed four hours after the hemostasis was achieved, and this is, is done by just simply unlocking the stopcock and pulling the thread through the skin. She was monitored on our CCU for 12 hours and then downgraded to the telemetry unit. She was started on a, a direct oral anticoagulant um, with a loading dose on post-operative day one. Post-operative day two, uh, a repeat echocardiogram was performed with uh, the representative pictures um, here, which you can see show that she had a preserved right ventricular function with, with really only borderline dilation at this point. Uh, when compared to her initial presentation with a, with a big blown out RV. And then she was discharged on, on post-operative day three. So in conclusion, uh, we had a, a case of a intermediate high risk pulmonary embolism, which was successfully managed with aspiration thrombectomy with the, the new Penumbra Flash 16. Uh, we had intraprocedural improvement in mean pulmonary artery pressures from 34 to 17 millimeters of mercury. Uh, there was immediate improvement in oxygenation from 15 liters per minute to room air while still on the table and early improvement in right ventricular size and function, uh, which uh, we, we suspect um, will, will uh, help her in the future, although ongoing studies are, are, are attempting to show this. Uh, she was discharged on post-operative day three on oral anticoagulation and uh, phone call after her discharge uh, reports that she's doing well. Um, and is, uh, is not exhibiting any cardiovascular symptoms. Thank you very much.